definitely not. Right. We'll try it out. The only thing constant in business is that there's always going to be change. And what do I mean by that? Think about computers in the early 90s when they started to make their way through, right? When back in the day, people, I mean, I remember growing up as a kid, you know, when I had a, a project to do, I, I was the, I had to go and get, you know, the encyclopedia edition if I had to do a research project in school, in elementary school, middle school. And I remember having to type using a typewriter. Anybody remember those days? I, I just gave away my age probably, right? <laughs> I posted something a couple of days ago that I saw was kind of funny. And I was like, it's true, it's true, right? Millennials, for my millennials, watch. watch this. If you're a millennial and you don't feel like showing your camera, just say, you know, put, put a thumbs up or something in the chat box if you're, if you're okay with your camera. Let me know if you're a millennial. Millennial gen, any millennial gens? No, yes, maybe. Tanisha, no, yes, maybe. Not sure, not sure. Okay, okay. So I, I read this, it's pretty cool. It says, it says, millennials, brace yourself, right? It says, um, it says, uh, your life events are now considered history in history classes, 9-11. 20 plus years, right? Like, holy crap, my kids are going to be learning about 9-11 in history class. You know what I'm saying? Like, holy crap, I went through that. That's history, right? Your music that you like to listen to is now considered the throwbacks, right? If you listen to certain stations, like, oh, the throwbacks, it's like, you know, the old school stuff, man. It's and you're like, damn, man, that's, that's my music. That's my stuff, right? And, uh, and the other one was um, the shows that you used to watch are now considered classics. And so why do, why do I say this? Change is inevitable. Change is always going to happen. If you don't adapt to it and if you don't adjust to it, you're going to fail, especially in business. When computers came along, there were people that were fighting against it, fighting against it, fighting against it. They still wanted to do very much things paper. They still wanted, you know, you know accounting systems to be in paper. They still wanted the traditional fax things over to me, fax. Remember back in the day, faxes were such a huge thing, right? Fax it to me, fax it to me. Emails were like, what in the world is email? Like, holy crap, you know? Now, a days, you can't survive in this world without having at least one email address. Most accounts that require, you're, when you're required to create accounts, it's email, email, email. Now, fax is the thing of the past. I have a digital fax line. I have a digital fax line and I have no idea why. I have absolutely zero idea why, because document imaging, uploading, all that stuff, if you don't adjust to the trends of time, you're going to fall behind. When I came into this industry, everything was paper applications, paper applications, paper applications, I pipeline, e-signatures, that, was, that wasn't even around. And it started creeping its way in, but I was so used to paper that I just, I, I felt so comfortable with paper. I couldn't see myself doing anything different, but I had to get uncomfortable and do things with technology. Now, now, now I can't stand paper. Now I, I flee and run from paper like no other. I have a printer and I think I only use it for my kids' school, my kids' schoolwork. I mean, it's, it's crazy. If you don't adjust to the trends of time, you'll fall behind. So why I, I say that to you right now, because e-commerce is something that five, 10 years ago was a dead project. And right now it's one of the hottest things out there. It's one of the hottest investment opportunities to get because it fulfills so many needs. For the, for the person that wants to build a business from home, e-commerce is a route to go. For the person that wants to make you know, short-term returns, e-commerce is the route to go. For the person that wants high demand and security, e-commerce is the is route to go. Now, I'm not pushing that as the only solution. I'm not. I'm just simply saying diversification is important and understanding that you need to adjust and adapt, adjust and adapt. It's also going to be very important in the world, in the world of business, in the world of business, you have to adjust and adapt. Um, I foresee, I'll tell you what I foresee in the next decade. I'm going to throw this out there in the next, I remember a time when indexed index IULs were like something that nobody in the insurance industry ever thought would happen. No way. Market like returns without market risk. No way. It's not going to happen. No way. Insurance companies profit way too heavily on the whole life sector. They're not going to they're not going to open that market up. And then, boom, look what it is now. Now, IUL is the hottest permanent insurance in the market space. When you compare it to the VUL, when you compare it to the UL, when you compare it to the GUL, when you compare it to the whole life, it is what's hottest. It's the hottest. It's not the solution for everybody. I repeat that. It's not the solution for everybody. I do believe in proper fact finding. You know what I mean? And, and, and here's what's great. As an independent agent that we are, independent brokers that we are, we can represent every single one of these products. 
we could represent every single one of these products. I don't have any bit of a bias towards any one company. I don't have any bit of a bias towards any one product. And that's the one thing I would recommend you guys do in your practice. You have a bias towards who you are as an insurance agent. You have a bias tour towards who you are as a financial advisor, your brand, your company name. But the companies that you represent, one decade, they're the best. The next decade, they're not. The products that you're representing, it makes sense for this particular product it, uh, client. It doesn't make sense for this particular client. You've got to have an understanding of what's happening and not be narrow-minded and say, I'm only going to master this one thing. I'm not going to research into this. That's the mistake that, in my opinion, you know, captive, operate, captive organizations do. Companies like, for example, Primerica, they're so fixated on the buy term invested difference concept. They refuse to open up their eyes and realize that there's a reason why there's a reason why the federal, the, 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 the federal government, the SEC, you know, the Department of Financial Services has approved products like permanent insurance, you know, for whole life final expense have approved things like index universal life. I'm not going to tell you that there aren't bad ones, but just like there's bad term policies, there's good term policies. If you're not open enough to learn about other opportunities or learn about what the competitors are doing, if you're not open enough to learn about what the competitors are doing, little by little, the competitors will creep up on you and you will fall behind. You will 100% fall behind. I brought e-commerce into the platform 100%, 100% simply because I want you to understand there is so much of an opportunity there right now. And I want my clients and my agents to be able to capitalize on that opportunity. Will it be that way 10 years from now? Who knows? But right now, it's definitely the thing to go towards. It's definitely the thing to look towards for short-term investments. 100% hands, hands on without a doubt, which is why I love saying that we, we finally popped we pop that cherry. We popped that cherry. We, we've got our first referral that we sent over to Ace Financial Services. Individual took advantage of it, took action of it, looking to grow their money. There's agents that are generating commissions out of that. Not little commissions either. I'm talking about, you know, I'm talking about comma checks, comma check type commissions. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. So this leads into the training that I want to give you today. Okay. You got to keep up with what the competitors are doing and you got to look at their numbers. You, Tony, you can't... Yes, Mike. Good morning. I, I just got to throw this in because it's so perfect. Um, to your point, about the industry, and mm -hmm. as, as you as you well know, I've witnessed a lot of change. Uh, I just found out there is a West Coast insurance company that's putting a policy on the market backed by life settlements, which is completely in line with what you're saying. And I will be reviewing it. I'll tell you more about it when I find out. But I literally found out yesterday. Uh, that's a possible revolutionary point in our market. That's powerful. That's powerful. Um, speaking on life settlements, let me tell you guys, um, back in the day, talking about life settlements was almost taboo. You know, it was taboo because the insurance companies wanted to make it taboo. <laughs> insurance companies wanted to make the concept of life settlements taboo. Why? Because think about it. Term life insurance is such a huge income generator for the life insurance companies. Why? Because 90% of them don't ever pay out. Not because the, comp the insurance company doesn't fulfill their obligation, but because the term policy expires and the person runs out of that time period where they were, sh when, you know, where they were protected, which is kind of like a double-edged sword if you think about it. It's like, hooray, you outlived this policy but dang, now you don't have any more coverage, right? You want to live long, but you also want to make sure you provide for your family, right? So, um, so, so life insurance in the term sector is such a huge income generator for insurance companies that a lot of those premiums, just so you guys know, is what allows things like IULs to even exist. It's what allows it because you have to understand they might be putting in this much money towards IUL, the, the consumer, but there's this much money from here to here that the insurance company is throwing into index strategies as well too. So whatever the return is, that whatever that percentage is, it's based on this number, which is why they're able to pay this number at high levels. A lot of people ask that question, why, why, why is it that you know, in the IUL, they're willing to pay you know, only on the upswing and never on the downswing? <laughs> and these caps are high, you know, 12% caps or participations, 140% participation, how's that possible, right? You gotta understand, your 12% of your money 
is only maybe 0.5% of the amount of money the insurance companies are investing. The, the amount of money the insurance companies are investing, that return that they're making, just so you know, insurance companies invest their money into treasury notes, long-term treasury bonds, some of the most conservative investments to be a part of. And, they, and they're generating, because they're going in into these large dollar amounts, they're going in in the millions of buckets. They're in different brackets that allow them to capitalize and gain 4%. 3%. You might say, wait a minute, that's not, that's nothing. If you yourself go right now to open up a treasury bond, a US treasury bond, you might find one and a quarter percent. You might, if you're lucky. They're finding two, three, and four, right? But they're making that two, three, and four on all of this premium, which part of this premium is what? Term life insurance premiums. So that three and four percent on this big number, even if they take a portion of that return and apply it to this IUL premium, right? The consumers that are invested in IUL, to the IUL consumer, it's 12% of their money, 13% of their money, 15% of their money. So I just want you to understand that the only reason why permanent policies even exist is because there's such a huge amount of term life insurance that is equally sold. There, that's the reason why. So why do I say this? Life settlements became very taboo. Insurance companies were like, wait, 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 hold up. You mean to tell me that you're going to purchase this term life insurance policy from all of these clients here. There's a conversion benefit in there that we threw in there, knowing that a lot of people more than likely won't take advantage of it. And you're going to convert it over, which means now there's a huge death benefit that we're going to have to pay. Life insurance company said, whoa, hold up, man. We don't, we can't really talk too much about this concept. Right. And it's not that they don't have the funding to do it. Remember insurance companies are governed very differently. Insurance companies have to have three times the amount of money that they have invested out. They have to have it into a reserve account. They also have three, they also have to have three reinsurance companies, which are other undisclosed life insurance companies that have agreed to take over their contracts if they decide to get out of business. So they're very conservative. However, they're in business for profits, guys. They want to make the most, the biggest bang for their butt that they can. So knowing that their term life insurance policies are going to expire, that's a huge income generator for them, a huge amount. Right. And so that's why life settlements became taboo. Now, look what Mike just said. Now they're creating an insurance policy. Who did that? Who created it? An insurance company. Realized they need to catch up with the trends of time. They need to realize that there's, they need to adjust. And they came out with a, a policy now that's backed by life settlement companies. That's powerful. That's super, super powerful. Just so, just, just so you guys can kind of understand. But I don't want to get off subject because I really want to hit in on this piece over here. Um, I started doing research, right? I started my training today telling you, I'm going to show you what the numbers are of the industry. What, what, what is, what are the competitors doing? Right. And it, and coincidentally enough, Rico this morning sends me a message that, that falls perfectly in line with what it is I'm talking about. And I'm actually going to take the screenshot that he sent me. I want you guys to see this. Let me open it up. And then, and then, and then, and then you're going to look at it first emotionally. Oh my God, how in the world are they doing that? And then you're going to, then we're going to break it down logically, right? Watch this. Take a look at this. This is a social media marketing campaign going on right now, right? So there's an individual named Brian Rollins who runs an FFL agency. Okay. Last month, last month, not last year, not 12 months, last month. They issued $1.065 million worth of business. That's insane. That means he's running an agency that is generating about $12 million a year of issue placed business. Right? If you look at that emotionally, you're like, how in the heck are these guys doing that? What are they up to? Dot, 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 right? That whole, that whole. Um, not I want to say victim mentality kicks in, but, you know, kind of that whole, you know, I'm, I'm a little bit envious, jealous, you know, what's the secret sauce kind of situation? What am I missing out on? What am I not? What's not clicking? Right. So then break the numbers down. That's what I did. I broke the numbers down and I go, OK. Watch this. A million six, five. Let me do it over here on this calculator here. So I'd opened up a million six five two six zero. That's the amount of business they wrote out of 154 writing agents. 
There was 154 writing agents that did this. Divide that by 154 writing agents. That's uh, just shy of 7,000 of annual premium. That's what it is. It's just shy of 7,000 of annual premium. Now, 7,000 of annual premium divided up over four weeks means that every single week they were closing on one $150 a month case. Every week they close on one $150 a month case or three $50 cases or two $75 cases. You see how the numbers now are like, wait a minute. Okay, hold up. I'm, I get it now. Okay, so let's reverse engineer this, right? Let's reverse engineer this. Let's look at TKO right now. Let's correlate this to TKO right now, okay? They're issuing a lot of business because they really heavily focus in the simplified markets. Simplified markets means that within three to five days, within five minutes to five days, really is what it is. Within five minutes to five days, they can get an approval and business can go from submitted to issued. That's, that's one thing. So they have a little bit of a speed curve in that world. And if you want to work the simplified markets, guys, we have the platform for it. I'm not telling you not to. I'm not. I believe that, that there's a place for simplified issued markets. I definitely agree that there is a place for it. I just don't believe that everybody should be simplified issued. Just like I don't believe everybody should be fully underwritten markets. There, there's a place for it, right? So I'm not here to tell you the good, the bad, or indifferent. I'm just here to talk about the numbers. They got 154 writing agents that are each writing 1,800 bucks a week in issue place business. That's it. Right. So how do I, I correlate that to our numbers? I want you guys to know. Right. Let me let me let me give you a number to think about here. Because, again, facts tell. Right. If you don't inspect your business, you're going to you're going to fall behind here. Uh, this is OK. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. 17. 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 29, 35, 39. Okay. We have 39 writing agents in TKO. 39. Now, let me show you, let me show you this number now. They, the 39 writing agents right now, let's break, let's, let's really kind of break this down even further. And I apologize, I'm not able to show you everything here because I'm trying to keep confidentiality as well too. I'm not trying to disclose off some of the, some of my guys. It's kind of a cool thing about being back office like this is because some of our agents, they want to be behind the scenes. There's agencies that are promoting right now on social media. You have no idea that we are their back office. TKO is their back office. It's kind of cool um, because they want their branding to remain independent, which I have no problem with that. Let me tell you here right now. New associates. Remember, it was 39, right? 39 was the number of writing agents. We went live January 8th, January 8th, we went live, didn't have contracts, but we at least started the process of recruiting and contracting and stuff like that. And since then, since then, da, 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 we have recruited 415 people, 415 people recruited. Let me write this down so you guys understand this. 115 people recruited, licensed and non-licensed, right? The result is 39 writing agents. For my engineers, you guys are gonna gobble this data, this data up like no other. He knows I'm talking to him. <laughs> All right, now watch. Now let me look at what's the how many of these guys are writing agents. Two thirty three. There's the left. There's the number. If you guys go into the Pingboard, your Pingboard app, you can see the entire hierarchy, the entire company's licensed writing agent numbers, right? If you look, you'll see that there are fifteen agencies, fifteen people at a VP level. Um, 
that are disclosed. Again, I have some that are indisclosed, right? They, they prefer to stay behind the scenes. But at the end, but, but 233 licensed agents. So look at this number, watch. 39, 39 writing agents out of 233, 16% of TKO's writing agents are writing business, 16%, 16%, right? And it's about a 50% ratio between non-licensed to licensed. That's pretty close right there, 15%. That means, you know, if I, if I break that down, divided by 415, 9% of our, nine, we have 9% of our agents writing business based on licensed and non-licensed combined. 16% based on licensed agents, right? So if these numbers are facts, it took these guys, it's a 9% ratio. Let's round up to 10%, make it simple. 10% of their agents are the writing agents. They have 154 writing business. That means that they've recruited 1,500 people. They've recruited 1,500 people in order to get 100 in, in order to get 10% of them, right? Let's 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 be let's get more accurate. I'll do let's do the nine percent. They've recruited 1,711 people. 1,711 people they've recruited in order for nine percent of them to be writing business for them to get that number. So now, if you're me. I don't ever look at something as, you know, impossible to attain. If I ever thought that, I'd never run. The, the TK wouldn't even exist. Because because I don't know what five the five-year version of me is going to look like. I don't know what the next year version of me is going to look like. You know, I, I'm, I, I choose to feel blessed and highly favored. And I choose to, you know, and live in the moment, but always push towards the next better version. I know my numbers now. I know my numbers now. I know that we need the moment we get to 1,700 recruits, according to our numbers, the moment we get to 1,700 recruits, we should have roughly 150 writing agents inside of TKO. So now, if you want to take those numbers and correlate it to your agency, right? Like, like dismiss yourself from the rest of TKO and just look at your agency. So you are the hierarchy head. You have to understand 9% of your licensed agents are going to write business. And you want that 9%. You want that 9% to be your passive income, your override income. You, that's what you want. You want that. So now go work it. Right? So now, now you got to say to yourself, okay, so if I can get each agent, each agent to do, let's go conservative. If I can get each agent to do 2,000, 2,000 of annual premium every single month, every single month. And let's just say that you override your whole agency by 20%, right? 20%. Look, look how I, look how I do this. This is kind of how I put together my own, my own business plans, right? Let's go conservative. If I want every single agent to equate to 2000 annual premium issued, right? Issue placed. And I want to make $10,000 a month, right? That's my goal, $10,000 a month. But I want that to be passive. If I'm making a 20% override on each two, on each 2,000 issued times 0.20, that means that every single agent is equal to 400, uh, every single agent is equal to 400 bucks. Every single agent is equal to $400 of override income if I'm their upline, right? So now what I got to do, Take 10,000, which is what I want to make. Divide that by the 400, which is what I'm making per agent. I need 25 writing agents. I need 25 writing agents to do 2,000 issue placed per month so that I could generate 10,000 of passive monthly income. Now, this 25 number, however, we know only 9% of the licensed agents that I recruit are going to write business. So do I got to recruit 25 agents or do I got to recruit more than 25 agents? 
I got to recruit more than 25 licensed agents so that the 9% is 25. So what does that mean? Let's, let's break that down. I got to recruit 277 licensed agents so that 9% of them write business. That's 25 of them. So that each of those can do an average of 2,000 issue placed to generate 400 bucks per agent so that I can get $10,000 of passive monthly income. There's the numbers. Assuming there's a 20% override between me and my agencies. So if it's a 10% override, like let's say you're a, you're a field manager, right? And the, re and the majority of your organization are senior associates, that's roughly a 10% spread. Just take these numbers and double them. Just take the numbers and double it. Now you can choose to either get discouraged and go, oh my God, I gotta do twice the work. Or you could choose to say, listen, I live in the United freaking States of America and I have a license that lets me go across all 50 states. I'm just gonna go to work. And if, if it's not 277 that I gotta bring on board, but it's, it's twice that amount, right? 277 times two. 554 licensed agents I got to go and recruit. Let's go to work. Let's do it. And as long as every single day I'm chipping away at that, chipping away at that, chipping away at that, doesn't mean that every single day you even got to recruit somebody, but every single day you're putting action towards this number, this will become a reality. This will become a reality, guys. This will become a reality. Never mind the 20%. Let's go off of 10%, just so you guys know. 554 licensed agents is everybody's goal here if you want to generate $10,000 a month. Passive. See, you, can, you have a choice, the same choice that I had to make. You can produce $10,000 a month every single month by yourself. But the problem at that point is you become way too important to the success of your business. You become way too important to the success of your business. That means if you yourself have one bad week, you've got, I mean, you, it skews everything off. It skews everything off. But if you spread that responsibility out, wide and deep, right? If you spread that responsibility out and you focus not on 10,000 of personal business every month, but you focus on 554 licensed agents that you want to recruit, this is the result. This indirectly becomes the result, guys. This is it right here. The reason why some agencies will go from, you know, we, we did, uh, we, we did, you know, uh, I don't know, a million this year. And then next year they do 10 million. It's not because they try to get every single agent that they recruited the year prior to 10 X their production. No, what they did is they 10 X their agents and they recruited. They continue to recruit and they continue to recruit. And what happens is this domino effect starts to take wind. One guy recruits two, two recruit four, four recruit eight, eight recruit 16, 16 recruit 30, you know what I'm saying? It keeps going, 32, 64, and it, 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 I mean, it compounds at a rate that you can't control. But here's the thing you can't do. You can't look at your agency right now and say to yourself, oh, I've got 15 writing agents. I'm already 60% of the way there. No, it doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way because you have to take into account the ratio of people that are going to actually write business. I would love to tell you, I would love to tell you that TKO has a higher ratio. I would love to tell you every single licensed agent that's come through our organization is writing business. I would love to tell you that. But you know what I've learned? I've learned at the end of the day, I cannot want it more for you than you. If I want it more for you than you want it for yourself, it, this, that, that formula doesn't work. That formula doesn't work because I lose sleep to, to, over your goals. I lose sleep over your family's desires. I lose sleep over your budget. but your habits, unfortunately, oh, outweigh any of my worries for you. They're going to outweigh any of my worries for you. So I have to accept the numbers as they are. And I hate saying these numbers the way that they are, because I know we can be better. But I just want you to understand, 16% of you guys, from a licensed agent standpoint, are writing business, 16%. 9% of you guys, from a total agency standpoint, are writing business. Now, am I proud of what that number has done? Yeah, look, 1.54 million of business in the last, you know, seven, eight months. That's, a, that's, a, that's something to be proud of. But when I look at competitors, right, and I see what they're doing, I'm not afraid of it. I just now know my numbers. I know my numbers now. 
154 writing agents is generating a million plus every single month of issue place business. The moment TKO hits 1,700 recruits licensed, the moment we hit 1,700 recruits licensed, you'll see that this agency itself, TKO as an FMO, will be doing the 12, will, will, will be running a $12 million operation. But now the question is this, if I know my numbers, do you know your numbers and how much of a percentage are you going to be of that? How much of a percentage are you going to be of that? Something that I heavily admire, heavily admire about one of my prior companies was that there was an organization that loved to represent themselves as the 50% organization, the 50% team, the 50% team. And it was ingenious because every single year, every single year when we, when we met up for our brokers meeting, and we got these little booklets and we broke down all the stinking numbers and we broke down the entire company's numbers. All they said was, if this is what the company's doing, our business plan is going to be 50% of that. And that's what they would attack. They would attack and they would attack and they would attack and they would attack and they would attack. And they knew that if the company was growing, they were growing as long as they were focused on being 50% of that company. So I'm telling you guys right now, I'm telling you guys right now. If every agent is going to generate $400, no, that, that's a 20% override. Let's go 200, 10% just a 10% override, a small little itty bitty 10% override. If every one, if every writing agent in your organization generates 200 bucks of override income, and you now know you need to recruit not 277, you got to recruit 554 people, 554 people. Actually, 554, yeah, 554 licensed, not people, 554 licensed agents. you got to recruit in order to make 10,000 bucks a month. How, I mean, how fast do you want to do that? How fast do you want to do that? If I tell you that my goal as an organization <clears throat> is to do, is to run a $12 million operation within the next three years, 12 million dollar operation within the next three years. And I know that I need to recruit 1,700 licensed agents. How much of that 1,700 is going to be you? How much of those are going to be underneath your code number, your writing number? Because here's the thing, because I don't allow my business, my livelihood, my income to be determined by one person or one team or one agency or one leg, however you want to do it, I know that if I stay focused on, if I stay focused, of course, it'll happen. If I stay focused, of course, it'll happen. And those numbers by default are going to exist because I'm not, I'm not banking on one person, right? And I say that to you because you shouldn't do it either. You should not bank on one person. Go wide, go wide. So when you're, when you're watching social media and you're like, man, this is a million, 800,000 I did this month, da, 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 da. you got to look at the fine print. How many writing agents did they have? And you got to understand that to get that many writing agents, that was only about 9% of the amount of agents that they actually recruited. You want to know what's different between them and, and us or them and your personal agency? They're going wider a lot faster. That's it. Simple numbers. They're going wider a heck of a lot faster. If you're focusing in 100% on the whole concept of writing business, writing business, writing business, writing business, but you're not focusing on going wide, you're not going to build yourself a passive income business. You're just not. You're just not. Now, if you're if you're watching, if you're listening to this conversation right now, you're saying, oh my God, man, this, this sounds way too MLM-ish. No, it's not about that. Notice, it's not about multi-level. This is not that. There's no, you guys get no benefit if you recruit a bunch of these guys and none of them get licensed, none of them come to training. None of them buy leads. None of them actually go and use their license. I want you to understand that. It's not just recruiting them. It's recruiting them, getting them plugged into our system, getting them through contracting, getting them to sit in through the trainings, getting them to buy their, their, their batch of leads or provide you a top 25. I'm going to tell you right now, an agent of mine that I directly recruit that's unwilling to put together a top 25 list or buy a lead list, I can't work with you because you've literally put a big old roadblock in between your success. And that roadblock has to be your roadblock, not mine. If I got to spend time and energy to motivate you to get out to the field and, ex and, 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 and present your business to people, then I'd rather go focus on somebody else who's willing to do it. So you can either put together a top 25 list. Let's start working in your market. Guess what? I don't do that with people who don't have licenses. That's, you get what I'm saying? I'm working with people with licenses because I want them to generate income. 
but you're either putting together a top 25 of your own warm friend, your friends and family, or you're going to purchase a list because you don't have a natural market. you got to find a way to build a, a market, but there's got to be a name and number for us to call. If there's no name and number for us to call, you somewhat become irrelevant to your family. You become irrelevant to your business. You become irrelevant to TKO. I love you. I'm going to always be there to root you on. I'm always going to be there to support you. I'm always going to be there, you know, to help you process issues and such like that. But I have to limit my time with you because you're, you're, you're choosing to put this roadblock in front of you. You're choosing to put this big barrier in front of you. Guys, in the world of sales, I don't care what you're selling. If you're not presenting it to somebody, your business is dying. Your business is dying. You know what's the most important thing to a car dealership? Anybody know? The most important thing to a car dealership? The lot. The lot. Do you know why? The lot and the location. Because if, if their location is in a high traffic driving area and their lot is big enough to see their inventory, what are they going to get? They're going to get traffic. They're going to get people to come through the door. If you ever go rent a commercial space, okay, storefront property costs much more, much more than behind the scenes property. Why? Because storefront property gets more traffic, more people seeing them. If you don't make a decision to get out there and be seen, your business is dying. Your business is dying. You should operate this business with two different lenses. One lens is the, short, is the nearsighted lens. The other one is the farsighted lens. Nearsighted. I got to find clients. I got to produce income. I got to support myself today. Closing, production. This, this long, this, this far-sighted one is I got to find the recruits, the agencies. I got to find those individuals because I know that only 9% of them are going to generate consistent monthly income. And I need that, my, that 9%. I need that 9% of my agents. I need that 9% of my agents to turn into $10,000 a month of override income. And, and, and you focus on both. In the beginning, it's almost like 50-50. You're focusing on both on 50%, 50%. But what happens is as this number starts to grow and residual and your agency starts to grow and your residual income starts to grow, you could do this. You can slow down a little bit here on the production because you know your existing agencies are providing you over and you could double down on the recruiting. Doug, you could double down on the recruiting. Now, now let me let me tell you this. Let me let me give you some other numbers here that you guys can look at. Let me give you this. Hang on. If you're thinking to yourself, oh, man, you know, the whole process of where is it? Where did it go? Come on. Man. Hang on. The whole concept of recruiting and licensing and this look, I'm going to I'm going to tell you guys right now. <laughs> I'll tell you right now. OK, I focus more attention on licensed agents than non licensed agents. I focus more attention on licensed agents than non licensed agents. And if you. If you came from a company where you had to sign some type of a holds harmless, uh, not a hold harmless, a non-compete clause or anything like that, listen, you know, let me let me let me show let me share something with you that should give you some insight. Watch this. Ready? Look at this. 1.2 million insurance agents there are in the United States. 1.2 million licensed agents exist in the United States of America. Now, go back into the history books and ask yourself how big the agency the, or the FMOU came out of is. If they're not even 1%, if they're not even 1% of the population of licensed agents, then don't worry about them. Don't worry about them. See, I, I came, I left from a captive operation. I left them a captive operation. I didn't, I didn't go back into that well looking for individuals. No. 1.2 million licensed agents. You know how many there are in the independent world? You know how many there are from other agencies that I never represented? Now you might say to yourself, wait a minute, what are you, what are you, are you recruiting industry? Yes, yes, I am. There's a lot of unhappy licensed agents. That are being that are not being taken care of, that are not given the resources that they deserve to have, that really want a fair shot, but they're so far down the hierarchy list that any of the the trainers, the mentors, the people that could really elevate them, they're just not focused on them. They're not focused on them. So if they're not focusing on them, why not I focus on them? 
Why don't I give them an opportunity to flex their muscles and try? Let me give them the focus. That's the mindset you should be thinking. I Look, the reason I have undisclosed agencies, just so you all know, is because a lot of my, my undisclosed agencies are independent writing agents that have had a big teams in the past and their branding, their company branding is so important to them that they, that they choose to be indisclosed because they don't want the name TKO to overshadow, right? And that's their own personal preference, but I have to respect it and I'm okay with it. You know why I'm okay with it? Because these are operations that have come on board that were, they were already doing seven, 750,000 a year, a million a year in production. It's so turnkey. They, I, all I did, all I did, guys, just so you know, only thing I did is I just offered them a back office. I didn't try to tell them, hey, you need to sell this way. You can't do it this way. You can't sell this company. Let me show you. No, if they already had something that was going good for them and moving, all I did was enhance the resources, the benefits that they have. Game on. I just recruited an individual right now. He reached out to me on social media. Okay. He says to me, he says, listen, I can't get my guys that are licensed contracted because we don't have enough of a back office. And I can't stop to contract them because I got to be on the field selling. So what do you have? I said, bro, I have, a, I have a turnkey operation. My team will help your guys get contracted. I have all the systems in place for it. Somebody just got recruited right now. Look at that. Is that you, Rico? Hey, there we go. He's building right now. I just got the notification. So why? why so, so you know what caused this agency to come over? It wasn't the contracts. It wasn't the company. It wasn't the training. It's the fact that we have a contracting team that will help his guys all get contracted. He literally said to me, he says, one of my guys needs AML. I have no idea how to do that. I said, bro, I have, I have screenshot play by play on how to do your AML. I'm like, give us a shot. You want to know how I recruit? I tell them, I tell them this. I go, look, give us a shot. You don't have to cancel any of the relationships that you currently have. Okay. You can enhance it. Add a couple companies that you're not selling through my platform. Sit in on some of our trainings. Participate in some of our back office resources. If you start to see value with what we have and you choose to bring more of your business over our way, I'll gladly take it. If you choose not to, it's okay. No problem. But why am I, I'm not going to ask you to burn your bridge that feeds your family to join this bridge, not even knowing if this bridge is, is sustainable enough for you. So test us out. Test us out. I'm literally telling you, keep the boat that you're, that you're on right now and, 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 and get on mine for a little bit, knowing you can always go back to your other boat. That's it. That's how we recruit. That's how we recruit. This is, you know, back in the day, I, we used to do so much training on how to do recruiting interviews, recruiting interviews. It was more focused on recruiting interviews than actual sales presentations. You know why? You had to become really good. You had to become really, really, really good at interviews because the, opp the opportunity itself was only about 20% of what the industry really had to offer. That's what it was. You had to become amazing at selling something that when compared to the industry was only about 20% valuable. That's, that's why. You had to figure out a way. I don't know this guy, but by the time I'm done, he needs to take out his credit card and, and give me his information. He doesn't even know who I am. He's got to give me his information and give me a few hundred bucks. Oh, and then after that, I got to convince this guy to do this list of qualifications that will generate you no income along the way, but will generate income for the company and for me along the way. Oh, and then I got to convince him that he's got to tell 10, 20, 30, 40 of his own people to do the same stinking thing that he just did. You know how good you had to become in recruiting interviews when, <laughs> when that's what you're pitching? You know how good you have to become? You know, my recruiting interviews are right now. It's so easy. Hey, what do you, what, I tell them, what are you looking for? What are you looking for? You looking for training like a career agency model does? You looking for structure like a recruiting model does? But you want to be independent and have high contracts, right? So what if I give you the best of all three in one place? What if I told you, look, zero dollars to come on board. I'm not trying to make money on you coming on board. None. I'll get you contracted in 24 hours. I'll start you off at higher levels than probably you're at right now. Oh, and by the way, you're not signing a contract with me. So if you don't like it and you want to contract other places, go, go ahead and do it. Go ahead and do it. You want to know something that I learned as I conclude here? And hopefully this number will stick. The number that should stick in your head is 
actually, there's a guy named Cody, Cody Atkins. Anybody know Cody? Anybody know Cody Atkins on social media? He runs a, a seminar called the 8%, 8% seminar. Okay. You know why, you know why 8% is a number he uses? Because of that number I just gave you. It's how crazy. Look how crazy. I, I said 9%. He said 8%. Look how close we are. 8% of the industry will be writing business and running a business and succeeding. The other 92% licensed agents, unfortunately, will be distracted and not do a single damn thing with this opportunity. That's, that's the unfortunate truth. It's the truth. 8%. That's the number that should stick. 8%. 8%. 8%. Every hundred guys you bring on board, eight of them, if they're licensed, licensed, every hundred licensed guys you bring on board, eight of them will take it as serious as you do. The other 92 will get distracted with something, family, life, fears. A lot of it is just their own head, their own mental block. But if you know the number now, if you know the number now, you won't get upset with yourself. You won't compare your business to the 100% of your agency. You'll take your numbers and go, okay, this came out of only 8% of my agency. So now how big can you make your 8%? How big can you make your 8, 9% of your business? How big can you make it? How big can you make it? That means that 8% of your guys are going to be willing to buy leads on a consistent basis. 8% of your guys are going to be willing to make phone calls on a consistent basis. 8% of your guys are going to be willing to get on training on a consistent basis. 8% of your guys are going to be willing to sacrifice an evening, a weekend, a Saturday, and go out there. 8% of them, the other ones will sleep in, make excuses, show up every now and again from time to time, but you need to accept it. That's business. That's this business. But now that you know it, how big do you want your 8% to be? How big do you want that 8% to be? You know, because what those 154 writing agents that we just saw, they, they, they do a couple things. You want to know what some of their activity is? I'll tell you what some of their activity is. They're buying leads on a weekly basis, no matter what. That's one thing they're doing. They're buying leads on a weekly. They're not just spending. They're not saying, here's 200 bucks. If I don't make any money, I'm going to pout about it. And I'm not going to buy another batch of leads for two more months. Okay, so you're going to hurt your wallet. For two months, you're not going to buy any, any more leads for yourself. And you're going to be broke for two months. That doesn't kill. You're not killing. You're not hurting me. You're hurting you. They buy leads on a weekly basis, no matter what, unemotionally. Sometimes this batch works, sometimes this batch doesn't work, but they're always buying and they're always buying and they're always buying. That's number one. Number two, they're religious about their phone zones. I know how that operation works. They phone all day Monday and they phone all day Thursday. All day, all, all day. Guys, I'm talking about eight in the morning to seven o'clock at night. They're knocking out 300 calls every one of those days. So 300 calls on Monday, 300 calls on Thursday. You know what they're, you know what they're, they're, they're doing Mondays? Mondays, Monday nights, they're obsessed with filling in their calendar up Tuesday, Wednesday. They don't care about Friday, Saturday. All they're obsessed about is filling Tuesday, Wednesday up. Urgency. Fill up Tuesday, Wednesday. So if they're dining all day Monday, they want to leave Monday night knowing that Tuesday has, 10, has 15 appointments and Wednesday has another 15 appointments. 30 appointments in two days. You know why they want 30 appointments in two days? Because only about a third of them are going to keep. And, uh, and only about a third of those are going to actually take action. So 30 appointments, a third of them keep, that means 10 of them kept. 10 of them kept, that means only three of them actually closed business. Three. They don't care about Friday, Saturday. They care about Tuesday, Wednesdays on Mondays. And then on Thursdays, you know what they care about? Thursdays, they care about Friday, Saturdays. So Thursday is another day that they're dialing for dollars, dialing for dollars, dialing for dollars, dialing, dialing. They want to close off Thursday and they want to they want to hang their hat up and say, I scheduled another 30 appointments for Friday and Saturday. Oh, but my family's off on Saturdays. Yes, your family's off on Saturday. Can you say how many can you sacrifice a certain amount of Saturdays so you could build 10,000 bucks a month of residual income? And then instead of saying, hey, we can only go out on Saturdays and Sundays, we can go out seven days a week. Because this income is coming in no matter what, because I built something that generates it to me passively. Can you sacrifice some of them? But they're going out Fridays and Saturdays, Fridays and Saturdays, Fridays and Saturdays. Sunday's their day of rest. And you know what they do on Sundays? It's their day of rest from the field. It's their day of rest from their team. But they still have at least a two-hour window to themselves where they're doing what, you know what they're doing, that, 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 that two-hour window? They're strategizing, they're planning, and they're getting ready for the next week. 
that's some of the activities that that hundred, those 154 writing agents have. That's some of their activity. They're spent, they're, they're buying guys, anybody that makes, just so you know, anybody that makes 20 plus thousand dollars a month in a lead generation business is spending, is spending four to 5,000 a month on leads. Don't get me wrong. There's still a hell of a profit margin. You spend four grand, you make 20, you net 16. I'm happy. You spend five and you make 20, you net 15. I'm happy. I'm at 25% of my gross revenue is what went towards the expense. The other 75 is profit. I'm happy. But look at the numbers they're spending. You know what they're not doing? They're not saying, oh, I'll do 150, 200 bucks this week, but you know, get back at me next month. No, they made a decision. They went in, they bought leads and then they worked the leads. How do they work the leads? With the activity I just shared with you. Monday night phone zones, Thursday phone zones. And you know what they do to the numbers that don't even answer them? You know what they do to those numbers? They take them with them when they're out on the field because they know, they know that two thirds of the meetings that they schedule, they're gonna cancel. They're gonna completely cancel. So that open space of cancellation, you know what they do? They knock on the doors of the people who what? Who didn't pick up their phone. They knock on the doors of the people who didn't pick up the phone. They knock on the doors of the people that politely said they weren't interested because no on the phone doesn't necessarily always mean no face-to-face. -face. Sometimes no on the phone just meant that they were busy at that moment. That's what they do. But you owe it to yourself and your family. Your lead owes you a no to your face. Not a no answer. They owe you a yes or a no. So you can definitively take that person and say, they want something, they don't want something. They owe it to you. And you know how urgent they're acting on a weekly basis? Do you know why they act urgently on a weekly basis? Because they know next week they got to buy another batch of leads. And they got to make sure that they work this first batch uh, extensively before they buy another batch of leads. They know that. They know that. That's, that's it. That's the difference, man. The only thing they sprinkle, you know what they sprinkle on top of that, which I think I've talked about it enough in the training. You know what they sprinkle on top? Speed. Success loves speed, guys. Oh my God. Success loves speed. So whether you came from a recruiting model, or you came from the independent model, maybe you came from no model and this is your first one. I'm here to tell you, I'm here to tell you, I don't care if you were getting paid 30% contracts before and now you're getting paid 120% contracts. If you don't work, those contracts won't work. If you're telling me, oh, I didn't recruit before because I couldn't get people convinced to spend 200 bucks on their 300 bucks or 150 bucks. I couldn't convince people to get started at 30, 40 and 50% contracts. I couldn't convince people to put together a top 25 when they didn't. I, I, could, I couldn't convince. We removed all of that. All of it. Zero dollars to come on board, high contracts, right? No captive environment. You don't have a natural market, buy leads. We removed every single objection under the sun that anybody that was captive in the past gave as to why they weren't succeeding. So why have you still not, and you know who you are, right? You know if you have a, your activity, why have you still not said, hey, now I'm gonna go wide like crazy and build like crazy. You wanna know why I love recruiting? I'll tell you why I love recruiting. 99% of the business that personally comes from me, stemmed and started from recruiting. I flew up to Chicago. I flew up to Chicago to go spend some time with the guys up in Chicago. 27 agents over there, another 25 virtual on a Saturday. But you know what I did on Friday? I went out to the field. I went out to the field with an agent that I didn't recruit, an agent that was three layers deep. That means I recruited Rubiel. Rubiel recruited um, Lizette. No, Rubio recruited Yasmin. Yasmin recruited Lizette Zavala. Lizette Zavala recruited Nefertari. I went out with Nefertari because she said, hey, Tony, you're here. I'm going to capitalize. I want to work with you. I got an agent. I, want, I, got a, I got a client I want you to meet. You know what we did? We did $250 a month of insurance premium. That's $3,000 of insurance premium. And coincidentally enough, we found $97,000 in an old 401k that we rolled over. Now, would I, would I have found that annuity if I didn't recruit into that market? Absolutely not. That's the only way I found it. 
It's the only way I found it. It's the only way I found it. So, so this, this message I'm going to tell you, it's a little bit of a cliche and it might sting a little bit, but it's the truth. It's the truth. You ready? I'm either going to recruit through you, around you, above you, but one way or another, I'm recruiting into a market. I'm going to recruit into a market. The difference between today and maybe where we came from, you know, is this. I'm not working in markets of, un of unlicensed agents. I don't want anybody to feel, man, my market was used up and I was squeezed dry. And there you go. You, that guy made a lot of money. I made nothing. No, 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 no. Get your license. Let's go out to the field. Let's be very direct with the people that we're going to meet with. Let's tell them, hey, she, he or she's insurance licensed. We want to talk to you about some of the services that we offer because maybe now or maybe later, there might be a need for some of these services. Not, oh, let's do a practice appointment, you know, and then, and then do a bait and switch. That's not what this is about. Let's be direct about it. But yes, yes, let's work in natural markets. Let's recruit our way into the markets. Rubiel found a way to recruit his way into the veterinarian market. How? Because he recruited Yasmin, who recruited Lizette, who recruited Nefertari, who happens to be working in a veterinarian's office. And that veterinarian office, has, she has really great relationships in there. And we met with a veterinarian because of who? Nefertari. Now, they all have licenses. So guess what? They're all making income. They're all making income. I go wide because if, all, if, if I go 10 wide and all 10 of them buy you know, $300 worth of leads, that's $3,600 of leads that's, that was purchased in under my agent number. And if they need my help, we go to the field together and what happens? We split commissions 50-50. And if they know how to write business by themselves, I'm just waiting for this passive income. Either case, $3,600 worth of leads and hard work was just purchased in my downline. That's a lot easier than me stroking a check for $3,600 and being the only phone, the only phone making the calls. 10 phones making a call, one phone making a call. Which one wins? You wanna out cash flow some certain people? Like, do you guys have a bullseye on certain people from the past? I got bullseyes on certain people from the past. I got bullseyes. You know what, you know what I gotta do to beat those? You know what I gotta do to beat those guys? I just gotta, I just gotta go wider than they went. I got to go wider than they went. I got to get more licensed agents than they do. I got to provide more resources to my licensed agents. See, I provide resources to you guys where it's not all recruiting. The problem is some of you guys went way too far left and said, oh, we don't ever have to recruit. I never said that. I never said that. You still got to recruit, but now you get all of these extra tools, all these extra resources, like Jarvis's speed automation system, like the ability to buy leads. You're going to recruit guys that are going to tell you, I have nobody to call. I don't know anybody, but they want to work super hard. Put them on leads. You're going to recruit people that are going to tell you, I don't have a life insurance market, but I got a hell of a Medicare market. Put them in the Medicare market. An override is an override is an override. Trust me. I don't care if the override comes from a health lead, a Medicare lead, a life lead, an e-commerce lead. It still comes into the bank account green, and I still use that green to pay the bills and support my family. And if you got too much pride, well, I don't want to get into Medicare. I don't want it. Then you're just hurting yourself. Resources is what, we, is what, is what TKO brings to the table. The, the ability for their 50% to still equal a comma check because their commission percentages are three times higher than they were ever before. What they would have made to you. Real, guys, you realize what Nefertari just did outside of insurance, just with the annuity, just with the annuity, would have paid her $600 where she came from. But because she did it over here, she's getting paid $2,800. We, we, we still did a 50-50 split, but her comp levels are that much higher. Some of you guys went so far left and said, I never have to recruit again. I never said that. You should be prouder and hyper than ever to recruit because now you've got something bigger and better to recruit them into without telling them to use up their, their, their money that they have for their electric bill on an enrollment, without telling that they got to find a way to come up with a, 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 another 300 bucks that nobody told them in the beginning that they got to buy for a ticket on a convention that's happening six months from now. No. Take the money and buy some leads and flip that money now. Take that money, buy some leads and flip the money now. Make money now. You don't have a natural market, we have leads. You have a natural market? Yes, we want to use that natural market, but you have a license and we're going to make money for you and we're going to help your family. 
I have zero lick of guilt when I tell you, we should go talk to your mom, dad, brother, sister, aunt, uncle. Because if something happens to them, you're going to give me a call and you're going to be in tears that something happened to your family members. And you're going to be in regret that you didn't tell them you had the insurance solutions to protect their loved ones that are left behind. But you have to have your license first before we do that. Because the last thing I'm going to have you do is feel like anybody squeezed you dry, generated a bunch of income, and then threw you out, to, out the curb. No. No, let's, let's, let's incentivize you. You're here for business. Let's make business happen. Let's make business happen. Listen, if you're recruiting non-licensed agents, I'm not telling you not to. I'm just telling you to be real with them. If you're going to take this serious, schedule your test in two weeks. I don't recruit a single non-licensed agent direct to me unless that person has, is going to tell me I'm scheduling my state exam in two weeks, three weeks the most. It shouldn't take anybody longer than that. If you're serious about getting your license, you're serious about working in this business, then you should be serious about your studies. You're going to give me the excuse it's taking me one month, two months, three months because life happened. Listen, life happens for everybody. Everybody. A lot of your own problems happen to be monetary problems, I bet. 90% of most people's problem gets fixed if they had the bank account to fix it. I promise you that. 90% of it gets fixed if you have the bank account to fix it. I don't care if it's relationship problems. I don't care if it's, you know, uh, exes problems, parenting problem, uh, uh, parenting plans, problems, legal problems. Listen, you got legal problems. I promise you. I promise you a high paid attorney will fix it for you. I promise you it will. You flood that legal situation with so much stinking legality. You're, that's it, game over. It's a, it's 90% of your problem is a financial problem and yet you refuse to get your license already? Then you refuse to invest in your license? That's the piece of the puzzle. That's the difference between people like me and people like you. And, I, and I'm, I'm, I'm saying you generally, I'm not pointing at anybody here, but if it's a wake up call, maybe it is a wake up call that you need to have. 9% of the licensed agents will use that license and generate a career out of this. 9%. Are you part of the nine or are you part of the 91 that make excuses, come up with complaints? Are you the one that's refusing to recruit and grow? Then you're just dying. You're slowly dying. I never said to get away from recruiting. I just said, recruit in the right environment, recruit to the right opportunity. That's what I said. This is the right opportunity. You want 10,000 a month passive? You want that? You need to have the agency for it. Then you gotta put the work in. Buy the leads, work the leads. The numbers don't lie. I went 22 minutes over today on training and I apologize for that, but I wanted to deliver that to you guys because all the production training that I give you is irrelevant if there aren't new bodies to learn it. Let's be honest. Some of you guys already know how to do the four types of insurance. Some of you already know how to do the diamond. You already know how to do it. You know what your business needs? Your business needs five new people that need to learn it. That's what your business needs. Five, 10, 15 new people that need to sit in on Monday trainings and Saturday trainings to learn it. And I'll close off with this. If you think just because you learned it, you shouldn't come to Monday training and Saturday training. I'm going to tell you this. Your agents will do 50% of what the hell you do right and 100% of what you do wrong. You don't show up to training. All you do is give them an indirect message that they don't got to show up to training, that they don't got to show up to training. That's, that's what you're telling them. So it does matter. It does matter. I understand if you're working, you can't be on camera. Look, respect. Look, Car Car Carlise Bell is on here right now. And I know Carlise's situation. She can't be on camera because she works a very high intense job with the government. Respect. But look, she's on. Some of the people that aren't on here right now are sleeping in. I respect that. I respect that. And I'm telling you guys this. I'm telling you so you understand. These are the little things that took me from being a sole producer making $50,000, $75,000 to now an owner of an FMO that's generated $1.5 of issue police business, y'all. I mean, are you kidding me? I just took a vacation with my kids a month ago. You know what I'm doing in the next three weeks? I'm going to Costa Rica with my kids for another seven days because of this business, because of this very business right here. I'm, I, I, I've become the it person for my family because of this business right here. I'm seeing people in this agency generating $10,000 commissions on a weekly basis that never did before because of this business right here. But the one thing that I did is I always went wide. I always went wide and I always went wide. You don't want to work, I'll recruit five more people. And out of the five, one of them is going to want to work. But I'm not going to let your roadblock 
become my roadblock. So I'm telling you this, your agency, you are the head of your agency. Are you gonna let, are you gonna let other people's roadblock get in the way? Are you gonna let your roadblock get in the way? You don't have time, recruit somebody who has time. You don't have the money to buy more leads, recruit somebody who has the money to buy leads. It doesn't cost anything to log into training and learn and master your craft. It doesn't cost you anything to learn how to do a presentation. So if you become knowledgeable here in your mind as a, as a trainer, you can recruit the people who have the money to buy the leads because those people who have the money to buy the leads need your mind to go out to the field and close on the business. And you know what that is? That's 50%, 50%. Intellectual property, guys. I'm giving you from my mind what I've learned in this business, but somebody else is going to need to learn it. And if you recruit them, they're going to need to learn it from you. That's overrides. That's joint work. That's field training. That's where you generate your income. Social media is free. Some of y'all ain't using it enough. Coming to the Zoom trainings is free. Some of y'all ain't using it enough. Energy is free. Your energy, your ability to be excited about something, it's free. Some of y'all ain't using it enough. And I promise you, that energy you guys exert to your teams it passes down. So are you passing down positive energy? Are you positing down negative energy? We know the numbers now. I gave you the logic in the beginning. Now I'm giving you the emotion. This business works. You just got to work it. This business works. You just got to work it. Go wide. Use the videos like crazy right now. I spent a lot of time this week putting together videos for you guys. I'm literally in your wallet right now. I'm in your YouTube channel. Like I'm there. I'm there. You see somebody, you want to present them the opportunity, boom, send it to them. What is TKO Financial Network? Send them that video. It's me for 20 minutes talking about the difference of the three types of models. They want to dig a little bit deeper. They're a little bit more interested. Set up a 15-minute phone call between you, me, and them. That's all you got to do. Well, you know, the only other little thing you got to try to do is learn how to master the, the craft of edification. Set up a three-way phone call. Create an edification, two minutes of edification. This is Tony. He runs the company. He's da 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 A little background. And then boom, I'll take over, help you recruit the guy. You know what else we just brought in automated from an automated standpoint? Once the person gets recruited in, I've already done an orientation on video. I've already done contracting. Literally, literally in the next 30 days, you're going to see a whole nother level of automation happening. Jarvis is taking on a whole nother, a whole nother role that we're building out right now. And it's, and it's, it's costing us a lot of time and a lot of money to do it, but pretty soon, when your new agents get recruited, Jarvis is going to start talking to, the, to them via text message as though they are a human being without them knowing it's the technology doing it. And it's going to send them the links. Hey, have you, have you gone on Voxer? Here's how you do it. Have you, have you started contracting? Here's how you started. And all, Voxer's going to, all Jarvis is going to do is send them videos that I put together instructing your agents how to do it. Boom. Now they can do contracting. Boom. Now they can do orientation. Boom. They can do an F&A. My, they can do a full FNA with me doing the dime analysis, me doing the budget analysis, me doing the four types of insurances. And yet all you're doing is sending them the videos. Boom, 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 boom. So here's my challenge. In our TKO website, I challenge everybody to do this. Go to, go to our TKO website. There's a new tab. When you log in and you could hit that down, that down arrow, there's a new tab called FNA New Agent Module. I want everybody here to do it because I want your feedback. I want your feedback on it. This module puts them through an, I mean, a beginning to end how I run a field meeting. From my pitch my, and my elevator pitch, what you guys call, I call an approach language, to my psychological questions that I asked to get them in the mindset of insurance, to the four types of insurances presentation, to a dime analysis and how I do a dime analysis, to my closing statement application process, how I present underwriting to my coming back for a delivery, getting referrals and, and prepping the book of business up for future follow-ups. From beginning to end, I want you to do the module for me and just follow the steps. In between reading and watching videos, you'll be able to do the entire thing. And here's what's crazy. I believe, I believe, and this isn't me tooting my own horn, this is just me being very proud of what I put together. I believe that that tool is gonna be good enough that some of you guys will go back to sharpen your knives and be able to learn how to run field meetings the way that I run them by going back to those modules and just re-watching them over and over and over. So that's my challenge. Everybody here, 
Just do it. It'll take you about an hour and a half to do the whole thing, I think. But I believe you'll look at it and you'll go, damn, I can do this. I can do this. And I can recruit people into this because that module is designed to take your new agent. And by the time you get a hold of them, they've done contracting. They know our orientation. They've done their needs analysis. Now you're going to put their personal business in place and plug them into leads. How stinking amazing would it be if you could do that just like that? Anyways, have a good one, guys. Be blessed. I want your comments in the Voxer. Give me your top two biggest takeaways that I just gave you today. Give me those two, and I'll see you guys on the flip. And if you're watching this video, and whatever it is that I said motivated you, hit me up. You can find me on social media, Tony Martinez, Instagram, Millennial Entrepreneur Hustle, LinkedIn, or I'll give you my direct numbers, 239-784-1118. Be blessed, guys. Have a good one. Bye-bye.